جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعادل زهرا وكمالا إن شاء الله تعالى ما بالله brothers and sisters In this episode I'm going to speak about the أركان القراءة الصحيحة The pillars of uh, the accepted recitation. The aimma of qiraat uh, at an early stage they wrote um, the the way to determine or the method to determine what qiraat is accepted and what qiraat is is rejected. There's a qiraat which are marduda rejected and qiraat which are maqbula accepted. How do we determine? what is rejected and what is accepted. They put down three, um, con- three pillars. They put down three pillars. And these three pillars, they unanimously agree upon two. And the two is ijma, that it, it's a must, it has to be found. And one of those pillars they differ upon. And I'll mention which one it is, inshallah ta'ala. The first pillar, that the scholars of Qiraat mentioned is Muafaqatu Rasm Ahad al Masahifi al Uthmaniya. Muafaqa Rasm Ahad al Masahif al Uthmaniya. What does that mean? It means the recitation that the Qari is reciting in has to be in line, in agreement with one of the Masahif of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Has to be in line, it has to be in agreement. Uh, to one of the masahif of Uthman. And the reason why we say one of the masahif, and some people, what they do say is it has to be in line with Uthman's mushaf. Because Uthman's mushaf, if you say that, it's slightly a problem. Why? Because Uthman kept a mushaf with himself in Medina. Are you saying it only has to be in line with the mushaf that Uthman has in Medina? No. We say that the recitation has to be in line with any of the five masahif of Uthman. Uthman radiallahu anhu, when the Quran was written, it was, it was gathered, what Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu did was he wrote five. And of course he made a, a lejna, a committee. Uh, Zayd ibn Thabit was running it. Uh, we spoke about that previously in our previous episode. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he sent it to five main cities. And some scholars, they said seven. We're now going to mention uh, the five main city view. Mecca, Uthman sent a mushaf with a reciter. The second is um, Medina, Uthman kept the mushaf with himself. Three, Kufa, Uthman sent a mushaf to Kufa. Sham, Uthman sent a mushaf to Sham. And fifth is Basra. Uthman sent a mushaf to Basra. All of these places he sent a mushaf and a reciter with it. Okay? The recitation of the Quran has to be in line with one of those masahif. Those five mushafs. One of them. The reason why we keep saying it has to be in line with one of them is there were some slight differences in some of the masahif. Naam, there were. For example, mushaf of Mecca has in there in Surah Tawbah Tajiri min tahtiha al-anhar. Okay? Whereas the other four masahif do not have it. Yani the mushaf of the people of Medina doesn't have min tahtiha al-anhar. The mushaf of the people of Sham does not have min tahtiha al-anhar. The mushaf of the people of Kufa doesn't have min tahtiha al-anhar. And the mushaf of the people of Basra doesn't have min tahtiha al-anhar. What does it have? It has without the word min. It has just tajiri tahtiha al-anhar. So the difference here is this min. The same applies in the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ The mushaf of Medina has سَارِعُوا without the wow. Okay? Medina. Sham, Kufa, and Basra, and Mecca don't have the, uh, the ayah as سَارِعُوا. Rather, it has it وَسَارِعُوا with a wow. That's where the Qiraat come into today. 
the qiraat and the variation of the qiraat is based upon the masahi of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Is it just based upon how the mushaf looks or is there also a recitation taken from a, a shaykh who took from another shaykh who took from the Prophet sallallahu who took from Jibreel, who took from Allah? Naam. Because Uthman didn't just send a mushaf to the people. He sent a reciter with it. Showing that the recitation, it has to be in line with this. And the shaykh is going to teach the people how to read from the mushaf. He, the qari, took it from the Prophet ﷺ. Okay? But all the other recitations that are in opposition to what is written in the Mus'haf, even if it was heard from the Prophet, is dismissed. For example, فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ متتابعات, That is nowhere in the Masahif of Uthman. All the five he sent, the word متتابعات is not in there. Even if the Sahabi heard it from the Prophet Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he heard it from the Prophet. It's not read anymore like that. So, it has to be read as the recitation of Uthman's Mus'haf. I hope this makes you all understand how the Mus'haf of Uthman عنه, was working. The recitation being in line with the Mus'haf is in two ways. Okay, this is very important you understand this point, brothers and sisters. The recitation has to be in line with the Mus'haf is either muhaqqaqa or muhtamila. What does that mean? It has to be in line with it. And it has to be in line with the Mus'haf of Uthman radiallahu anhu. Muhaqqaqa. Muhaqqaqa means that it's exactly the way that it was written in the Mus'haf. For example, Surah Al-Fatiha we have in the Mus'haf of Uthman, all of it, all of the Mus'haf of Uthman, it's written as Maliki Yawm al-Din. Maliki Yawm al-Din. That's how it's written. In the Masahif of Uthman, all five of them don't have Malik Yawm al -Din. It has Malik Yawm al -Din. That's how it's written and that's how some of the recitations are Malik Yawm al -Din. Other, 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 Another Qira'a is also read from there which is Malik Yawm al -Din. It wasn't just randomly read. The Qari heard it from the Prophet Sallallahu But the Rasm al-Uthmani it's not written as Maliki, lakin yahtamilu. What does it mean yahtamilu? The Arabs don't generally write the alif, just like they never used to write the dots. Okay? They never used to write the dots. So Abbas and Ayash could be read the same in the Arabic language before. There were no dots. The alif in the Arabic language was never written. They never used to write the alif. So Maliki was written like that. You could read it as Maliki and Maliki. Well, how could you read it as both? The Qari heard it from the Prophet. Both ways were heard from the Prophet. But remember what I said before, what is heard from the Prophet is not accepted as, as long as it's in line with what? As long as it's in line with the ras, uh, Rasmu Ahad al-Masahif al-Uthmaniyya, right? Uthman's Mus'haf, does it accept Maliki? Yes, it does, ihtimalan. There's a possibility, it can accept it, okay? But that doesn't mean it can accept it. So Sahabi just randomly throws in a qira'ah like that. It means that he took it from the Prophet. He has it from the Prophet. This qira'ah is, is narrated from the Prophet on a large scale. But does the Uthmani Rasm accept this recitation? We say, ihtimalan accepts it because of the way that the Arabs used to write. Okay? I hope that point is understood. Al-Imam... Abu al-Imam al al-Qurtubi, Abu Abdullah al-Qurtubi, the Mufassir, he goes and speaks about this point that I mentioned, that the variations that were in the Masahib of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the discrepancies, the differences that were present in it, that all of them can be read in. He said, وَمَا وُجِدَ بَيْنَ هَؤُلَاءِ السَّبْعَةِ مِنَ, من الْإِخْتِلَافِ فِي حُرُوفٍ يَزِيدُهَا بَعْضُهُمْ وَيَنْقُصُهَا بَعْضُهُمْ فَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ كُلَّ مِنْهُمْ اعتمد على ما بلغه في مصحفه ورواه أبو عبد الله القرطبي points out a very important point he says the differences that you find between the seven قراء the seven قراء that you see today that whose قراءات that we have that الإمام الشاطبي mentions in his كتاب حرز الأمان ووجه التهاني في القراءات السبع when he says جزا الله بالخيرات عنا أئمة لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسلا فمنهم بدور سبعة قد توسطت سماء العلا والعدل زهرا وكملا 
these seven, inshallah, which we're going to talk about each one of them, inshallah ta'ala, these seven qurra, with the two rawi that come from them. Like for example, we have Asim, he has two rawi that take from him, Shu'bah and Hafs. Let's take that for example. The differences that you see from these ruwat, these qurra, these, all of those differences come back. So one is adding something in, one is subtracting something from it. Abu Abdullah al qurtubi is saying these differences, it all goes back to the masahif that reach them. The mushaf that reach them. The people of Mecca, of course, their mushaf has something in there that the people of Sham don't have in it. So there's going to be a difference. The ones who have the mushaf that says in Mecca that has in there tajri min tahti al anhar, their qira'ah is going to be what? Their qira'ah is going to be min tahti al anhar. Okay? The ones that don't have min tahti al anhar uh, written in their mushaf and it has only tajri tahti al anhar, they're going to read it like that and that's going to be their qira'ah. So Abu Abdullah al-Qurtubi is saying that the differences that you see in the seven qurra, it goes back to the masahif that was sent to them. فَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّ كُلَّ مِنْهُمْ اِعْتَمَدَ عَلَى مَا بَلَغَهُ فِي مُصْحَفِهِ وَرَوَاهُ إِذْ قَدْ كَانَ عُثْمَانٌ كَتَبَ تِلْكَ الْمَوَاضِعَ فِي بَعْضِ النُّسَخِ وَلَمْ يَكْتُبْهَا فِي بَعْضٍ Uthman wrote some things in this mushaf that he didn't write in this mushaf and that he wrote in this mushaf. إِشْعَارًا بِأَنَّ كُلَّ ذَلِكَ صَحِيحٌ Why did Uthman do that? What was the purpose? Why didn't he just make all of the masahif as one? The reason why he, want, he did that is because all of those recitations are correct and they are allowed to be read in. But why did he not add some of the other qira'at in there that were also sahih? It's, there's a possibility they could have been abrogated. And Uthman dismissed those recitations. Even though the Prophet read it, but they were abrogated. وَأَنَّ الْقِرَاءَةَ بِكُلِّ مِّنْهَا جَائِزَةً Abu Abdullah al-Qurtubi says all of the recitations that these seven ruwat, seven qurra, read in, all of them are correct and permissible for us to read it. Let's go to the second pillar, inshaAllah ta'ala. The second pillar is muwafaqatul lughat al arabiyya It has to be in line with the Arabic language. This recitation has to be in line with the Arabic language. I, I have to point this out again and again and again, which is, it can't be that the recitation is read merely based on the Arabic language alone. No. There has to be a transmission for it. That's why the second pillar is going to come, inshallah ta'ala. Someone reads the Quran, it's in line with the Mus'haf of Uthman radiallahu anhu, and they say, guess what? I'm going to read this ayah this way. Grammatically, it's right. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's also in line with the rasm. Uh, uh, it's also in line with the rasm uh, ahad al-masahif al-Uthmaniyah. I don't have a transmission for it. The Prophet never read it like this, but it's, it's Arabic, and it's also what? It's Arabic, and it's also uh, in line with the ahad al-masahif al-Uthmaniyah. No problem. We'll say that's wrong. There has to be la budda min al-naql al-sahih. There has to be a correct transmission for it, which is the third point that's going to come, inshallah ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ أَبُوْ عَمَرَ الدَّانِيُّ He said, the author of the kitab, At-Taysir. He said, وَأَئِمَّةُ الْقِرَاءَةِ The imams of qira'a. The imams of qira'a. لَا تَعْمَلُ فِي شَيْءٍ مِّنْ حُرُوفِ الْقُرْآنِ عَلَى الْأَفْشِ فِي اللُّغَةِ وَالْأَقْيَسِ فِي الْعَرَبِيَةِ The scholars of qira'at, they do not rely in any recitation of the Qur'an on which word is the most common word or which word has its morphological structure is the most well known. No, they don't base their recitation on that. I mean, they don't base it merely on the Arabic language and what is common and this word is the most common word that's used and this is very strange. We might as well use this word. They don't. What they base it upon is which one has the, it's the strongest in terms of transmission. That's what they base it on. And they do base it, uh, uh, they do base it on, uh, they do base it on in, it being in line with the Arabic language. But this may not be the most common view. For example, قوله تعالى إِنَّ هَذَانِ لَسَاحِرَانِ Ponder here, brothers and sisters. إِنَّ هَذَانِ لَسَاحِرَانِ How is it, how is that recited? Inna is ismu 
it was the qaida in grammar that we study about inna. We say ismu inna is always what? Mansub. Hadani is a muthanna and muthanna is marfu'un bil alifi. How did the ismu inna become marfu' when it's meant to be mansub? Now this is the opinion of Bani Kinana, the people of Kinana. According to them, the ismu inna is also marfu'. It's not mansub. It's a lugha bil lugat al Arab. Even that though it's not the most famous, it's not the most common opinion. Common opinion that's well known is that ismu inna is mansub. But here, there's a lugha, milugat al Arab, a language from the language of the Arabs that they read that the ismu inna is marfu. Does that make sense? And so, what we say here is that we heard the Prophet وسلم, recite it like this. Alayhi salatu wasalam. إذا ثبتت عنهم لم يردها قياس عربية ولا فش لغة لأن القراءة السنة متبعة يلزم قبولها والمسير إليها. So they base it upon what is the most authentic in terms of transmission. They don't say that this is not really commonly known in the Arabic language, so it's wrong. We should read it like this. إن هذيني. They don't say that. Why? لأن القراءة السنة متبعة. Because the recitation is a sunnah taken from the Prophet Which we all have to take from Fulan, take it Fulan, from Fulan, Fulan to the Prophet That's why Imam Sharqibi says in his Hirz al-Amani wa wajhu al-Tahani fil qiraati al-Sab' wa ma li qiyasin fil qiraati madkhalun The recitation in the Arabic, the recitation of the Qur'an, the recitation of the Qur'an analogy and qiyas and which word is the most prominent in the Arabic language has no place in it. The, yani the Quran is based upon, Shatibi is saying, is based upon an naql wa riwaya, at-talaqi wal mushafaha, transmission taken from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. That's what he's saying. وَمَا لِقِيَاسٍ فِي الْقِرَاءَةِ مَدْخَلٌ فَدُونَكَ مَا فِيهِ الرِّضَى مُتَكَفِّلًا The third and final qila that the scholars of qiraat mention is at-tawatur, multitude narration, mass transmission. That this recitation that we have must be, it has to be mass transmission. This third pillar, there's a khilaf amongst the scholars. There's not ijma on it. There is not a ijma on it. Yeah, and there's a difference of opinion. Some scholars hold the opinion that mutawatir is not a pillar. What is enough is sihatu sanad. As long as the chain is authentic, as, le- as long as the chain is authentic, that's all that matters to us. And from the people who hold that opinion, and it was his last opinion, is Imam Ibn al Jazari. Ibn al Jazari has two conflicting opinions. The first early view that he used to have in Munjid al Muqri'in was Tawatur, multitude, multitude, multitude. And at his final stages, he pushed towards their opinion that Sihatu Sanad is enough, the authenticity of the chain. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to say to you that the opinion of Ibn al Jazari and those who hold the opinion that Tawatur is not a condition or it's not a pillar. Who say that all that's enough is um, an authentic chain? I don't believe their view are opposing one another, and I'll tell you why. Those scholars who said sihat al-sanad is enough and tawatur is not a condition, all parties agree on something and they differ on something. Let me mention what they agree upon. What they all agree upon is that even that though. Uh, they differ on the usage of the word. One is saying sihatu sanad, the chain has to be authentic, and the other one is saying tawatur, multitude narration. The ones who are saying sihatu sanad, the chain has to be authentic, their condition are other things with it as well, which is what? Ash-shuhra, wal-istifada, wa ijma'ul ummah. They're saying that it has to be famous and commonly known. It has to also be, they're saying, a consensus that Ummah all unanimously agree upon this recitation. Even if it didn't come through multitude narration, that the Ummah unanimously agree upon. And the ones who are saying that it has to be uh, mutawatir, mass transmission, or multitude narration, they're also saying that it has to be something that has reached a large amount where it gives us knowledge of certainty. 
Both parties, if you look at them, they're both saying that the recitation has to come about by way of what? It has to be ilm which is daruri. It has to be a knowledge that comes by way of necessity. It can't be, no speculations can be involved. Both parties are agreeing upon that. The difference here is, is that one is saying Sihatu Sanat and one is saying Tawatur. Uh, and the ones who are saying Sihatu Sanat, they're saying Shuhra wal Istifada, that is famous and it's uh, the Ummah unanimously agree upon that recitation. Which in, which in, uh, in other words, they're saying that it has to be uh, certainty. This recitation has to benefit our certainty. What does Tawatur benefit? What does Western scholars condition on Tawatur? Tawatur brings something, something that's mutawatir, benefits of certainty. So both parties are agreeing that this recitation has to be by way of certainty. Whether you call it Tawatur, whether you call it Sihatu Sanadi, Ma'ash Shuhura, wa Ijma'ul Ummah, it's the same thing. The natija, the final conclusion, is the same. Al Imam Ibn Jazari summarized it in some lines of poetry and he said, Fakullu ma wafaka wa chan nahwi wa kana lid rasma htimalan yahwi wa saha isnadan hu al Quranu fahadi talata tul arkanu wa haitu ma yachtalu ruklin atbiti shudu the hu lo anhu fi sabati. Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Barakallah fikum wa jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.